If you're thinking about jumping into FPV and you've been eyeing off those sweet DJI Goggles 3 that everybody talks about, this is the video for you because I've gone my entire career without doing a review of these and now in 2025, this is the time that after all my experience, we're gonna find out what is this generation of goggle like and does it get the most out of those air units that everybody online is raving about. G'day you absolute legend, Stu here from UAV Futures and this video, I have to say, I am pretty excited because I've seen the hype as well. This is finally like years in the making, I must be the last reviewer to do this, my review of the DJI Goggles 3. I'm never included in any DJI releases. Maybe they don't like what I say, but I have to say this to you. I'm not beholden to anybody else but you viewers, and this is gonna be my impressions on how I find these goggles. But just because I wasn't sent a pair doesn't mean I automatically hate them. I take FPV for what it is, how it comes on the bench. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go out to the field. We're gonna catch up with Stickman Steve. We're gonna cruise these things around. And if you are wanting to jump into FPV, this is gonna answer that question. Should you get these goggles? Are there better alternatives out there? What are the pros, the cons, and are they really worth the money? Even though they're over a year old now, are they still gonna be the top of the line, the best goggles that you can get? Now very quickly, before we go and fly them, there are some things you need to know because I must be the only person on the planet who has reviewed the N3 goggles before they've reviewed the G3s. And I have noticed something that I wish was said in the first time that I hated on the N3s. And of course, that is right here on the back. I'm gonna cop some flack for this, but I hate the inbuilt battery. Uh, I would love it if we could replace it. We shouldn't have to do that, especially when you're buying a high-end set of goggles like this. You'll probably hear us whinge about it in the field. Now, some big differences between this goggle and some of the others. I just noticed straight away, it sort of hangs off your face. First, some of the other ones like the walk snail systems, or uh, some of the HD Zero that sort of suction or stick to the front of your face. This one is more hanging off your forehead. I'm sure you'll hear Stickman Steve talk about that as well. I'm gonna put some stats on the screen because this goggle, it has been spoken about to death. It probably is the most popular goggle. You'll see those high-end pilot flying online. However, let's go do it in the field and you can see what is our first ever experience like with these goggles. Is it worth it? Should you get it? And the last one, if you ever wanna become a member for UAV Futures, like now is the time, that little join button down there, there's a bonus video as well, like the full breakdown where we go through everything, the unedited conversations of what we feel about these goggles. This is there, yeah, I yeah. agree, yeah. So I think that limits your options a lot, obviously, mm -hmm. but for the price, for them coming in being much more competitive these days with such a good product, all in all with your end-to-end -end transmission. So let's go do it, have some fun. Shout out to those people who do sign up to the members page in three, two, one. Radio out here in the field, besides being Mozzie Central, that's uh, Australian short for mosquito, but we're up and down Thickman Steve. We are actually finally doing our review of the DJI Goggles 3. So we're gonna see what it's like, have a bit of a comparison, find out should you get them. I know Steve, you have tried them in the past, but this is our deep dive review. DJI Goggles 3, it's a year late. Thank you very much, Steve. Let's do it, rip it around and also have some fun. Also, Steve's got no shoes on. Tell him that, that's yeah, ridiculous. UAV Futures has an awesome healthcare package. <laughs> kind of malaria, I'm good. I've tightened the battery up at the back. So it is a totally different sort of feel on your face than any other goggles like the Avatar X, HD Zero, Sky Zones, old school fat sharks. They all sort of like suck into your face a little bit more. The DJIs and especially with the N3s and these G3s, they like hang off the front. So all the weight is up here on the front of your brow almost or a little bit higher on your forehead and they just hang in front of your eyes. Now, in terms of light leakage, I'm not really getting too much. There's a tiny little bit down the bottom down here for my face near my nose, but let's turn them on. Uh, are we all clear of the drone? Yep, where's, all good. Where's, where's that? Just come stand behind me, Alan. Let me see. Oh, I've doubled. I've got picture in picture. This is awesome. Hey, hey. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking at you right now, uh, and I can see the drone down over there. That is pretty awesome. I do really like that feature. All right. All right. Now I do notice when I first flick the goggles on, every single time, it takes a little bit for it to like start recording or sort of boot till I start getting that image transmission. We've reviewed these O4 uh, Pros before, so the actual air unit we've got in here today, I do want to focus on these goggles and find out are they worth it in 2025. Let's go through here, uh, see if we can scare all those mosquitoes away. Very, very clear, and like this is about as good as you can get in terms of image quality as well. The O4 Pros with the G3s are comfortable on my face. I do think I actually prefer them to the fit of the Avatar X. 
However, this is going to sound crazy, right? Don't, the internet is going to hate me for saying <laughs> this. I actually think in terms of just pure comfort, the N3s might be a better choice. Like they, I find those a really, really comfortable goggle. Uh, the, the screens and everything like that, like it does look gorgeous. The greens, the detail you can see when combined with these new latest generation air units is fantastic. We're gonna go for a bit of a spin out here. We'll see how we go in terms of like packet loss and the megabits and all that sort of stuff. Are my antennas up? Yeah, mate, yeah, Perfect. you're good. Well, I'm not, I'm not getting any dropouts or anything. It's still at 60 megabits per second the whole time. Just looking at my link quality out here. Man, it... You over the water? No, but I'm over all the mangroves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, it's a fair way out. Yeah. Right up the back, near the furrows of the farm and that sort of stuff. Still out a here. lot of water around too. Yes, it's very, very wet and a lot of mosquitoes. Oh, yeah. So, uh, right, let's go for a, Let's do some treetop surfing as well. You going to go for the Matty split trick? Uh, no, because we're right in the direct line of that <laughs> flight path. Now, the actual price, like something I do really like about this goggle, I never knew this, but it looks like when I put these in, I, you know, all the IPG adjustments and you can focus them in and out and that sort of stuff. That's a big deal for me because I can really, and especially when you get this clarity and the resolution, you can actually notice it, but you can really fine tune this to be able to get that perfect image so it's not fuzzy for your eyes. I didn't think, I thought I just flew around on stock standard, but it turns out I needed to put one of my eyes at like minus 150 and the other one at minus 100. So maybe I do need to stop into spec savers or something, but I could notice the difference when I set it up here. So the fidelity or the range of options you've got in terms of adjusting if you need glasses or your eyes aren't perfect, I, I really like those focus options. I think that's gonna help a lot of people. It's, it's hard not to do this review as well without talking about just how good it looks. Because look, we do have the latest generation of air units in here. It does look absolutely gorgeous. And does it look better than walk snail like this? Yes. A big one would be, I guess, a comparison to how I used to fly around with the DJI Goggles 2. Uh, and it looks better than that again. So I know that used to be with the O3 air unit and everything. This is just like another step up again. But it's making me question, like, is this worth the $500? Would I pay this much money to have this sort of flight experience if I was just coming in? I would not do it if I was upgrading. I would not upgrade from any single system. Uh, if I had even open IPC, I think if I had a set of that or uh, flying around on walk snail, like you're still getting really, really good image back to your eyes. But if I don't have a system, if I'm coming in, coming in fresh off the bat and you do have a little bit of cash, this is a really, really good choice. I can't believe it's taken me so long, like over a year these goggles have been out and it's taken me that long to actually get this review out. In terms of comfort or anything like that though, I haven't noticed any light leakage. There's no curvature of the screen, which I did notice with like the N3 goggles. Um, yeah, a, a pretty solid choice, to be honest. I can see why they're very, very popular in the community. All right, where should I land, Steve? Uh, on that tree trunk. I won't be able to do that. Oh, come on, mate. All right. I don't know. Jay, Jay's looking like he wants to catch it. No. Nice. Like it's, uh, let's see. It, do I have any marks on my face? Like up here? Mm, a little bit of redness just where it's been resting on your okay forehead. it does feel a little bit sweaty yeah. so i noticed that they're not breathing nearly as much as some of my other ones so yeah yeah, yeah i noticed uh, that with I the don't entries know, so. they weren't fogging up but it's a pretty hot day yeah. that might be an issue if you're flying in some cold climates you might notice a bit of, a bit of fogging yeah. right send it over to stickman steve and see what he thinks cool. Roll up. hang on i just started recording there here we go all right steve you just took the radio off me how'd yeah. you do that i'll get that picture in picture thing guy did you like that That's actually not i didn't bad. actually know it did that that was an accident i was trying to just get straight video like looking through yeah but maybe it does that if you've got a vtx connected i mean you wouldn't well. want to go and look for your quad with it no this, but Oh, oh, I'm getting bitten by mosquitoes. Yeah, all right, you ready? Uh, you should be able to take off. Okay, so goggles, I'm still getting light leak. So I've played around a little bit with these, with that battery on the back. Yep. Because um, I found when I had it snug around the back of my head like I normally enjoy wearing them, I got so much light leak underneath that I could fit a whole finger in. And it just wasn't real good at all. I can so, see some sort of gaps on the side. Uh, side of my nose. As well. Yeah, but also up around the side of your head. But uh, I'm not, not getting coming any, in there. Nothing okay. noticeable, no. Yes. But look, honestly, the, the lens, the optics on these is great. I've just jumped straight in with the same diopter settings you had. Yes. It's no issue for me. I think I was playing around with it before. I think I had almost the same setting as you, but 
I did find because it goes in um, diopter plus or minus 50 increments. Yep. You couldn't really get in between. I felt like it was sort of a little bit not right for me. You were, okay, yes. Yeah, which is interesting. Like It's not enough to impede on my vision at all. But look, honestly, these screens just display the image so, so nice. And how does it look in 2025 with the O4 Pros, like the Pro Air units? Really nice. Yeah, really nice. Really smooth. I um, I am starting to become a bit more accustomed to DJI in terms of the transmission loss, mm -hmm. um, how it holds its image so much stronger through the range of packet loss compared to walk snail. Um, again, compared to walk snail, these screens mixed with the VTX that we're running, the O4 Pro, this grass is just full detail. You will not get that out of walk snail on any firmware. Yep. I can see all the seed pods and everything. Yeah, it's crazy. Do you want to go for a little burn up out in the distance there? Just a bit of a cruise um, and see if you get any packet loss or anything 20, like that? 22.6, is that yep, good? Yep, you're still good. You got a little bit, just don't punch it. Yep. Still Righto, got plenty yeah. of juice. We'll stay nice and low as well. Well, I don't know where you are, so uh, uh, not too low. The, <laughs> up over the furrows. Okay, copy, copy. Yeah, it's still going, mate. It's strong. Yep, yep. 60 megs the whole way. Turn yep. around nice and slow. Yeah, solid. Absolutely Copy. solid. That's cool. All right. What do you think for the price? $500 in 2025, these these G3s? Yeah. Um, as you said, I've not ever considered upgrading until I need to, right? So being a current Walksnail system user, if you were any system other than this, even your V203s, unless you've just got the money to spend, you don't need to upgrade. Okay. These are, these are great. They're awesome. And if it was your first dive into digital, yeah, highly recommend. But you don't need to upgrade. You don't need to drop that cash to have the same experience. All right, what about if you are coming in though? People are looking at this video and they're thinking, I want to buy a set of goggles. Is the G3 for me? Yeah, I think that's probably one good thing about the DJI system, right? So someone never come in, uh, never flown digital before or never flown at all before, you can go to a DJI retailer and chuck these on your head and see how they fit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people that are just coming in won't understand how personalized the goggle fit can feel. And it can be make or break between you buying one system or another. It, yep. it was for me. So I think, yeah, if you can do that before you decide, go and try some on at a shop. Have a talk to people. You'll be able to see them in all their glory in, in the store, mind you. So I think that's definitely an advantage. and It's something you should do before you start dropping serious cash. Um, coming from a, a, a bit of a background in FPV now, I've got some experience. Yeah, if I was just coming in, having the the privilege of using these trying before i buy i'd definitely jump at this okay you like them would absolutely love to own this yeah too easy it doesn't fit the best on my head i think i prefer the n3 fit okay that's kind of how i felt as well yeah but what about in terms of everything else but the fit with these goggles versus the n3 because they are like yeah. twice the price they are they are twice the price um i don't think you're getting twice the image quality mm -hmm. you are getting twice the the features and the um, the form factor is awesome for packing away. I'm gonna have to come in and land. Yep, yep. Copy that. The detail is crazy on these screens. Oh. Cop. Yeah, what do you mean? Not too bad. So with the the goggles N3, when yep. I used them, I had zero light leak, like zero. Okay. So when I took the the goggles off on a sunny day, it was crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Going from such black environment, immersive environment, to sunshine. This isn't too bad. Okay. Like, although I had that light leak, I know it's a bright day, but once I stopped looking for the light leak and, and assessing the goggles fit on my face. No, you don't need that, yep. Um, all that sort of noticeable light leak went away. As we? It, yeah, so. All right, final thoughts. DJI Goggles 3, I know they've been out for a while. DJI's probably not gonna be releasing any new goggles out there. Yeah, which is a good selling point, right? Yep. Like they're still pretty fresh. Yep. They've still got a brand new transmission system to boot. So if you're going to drop the cash or you are looking for a new set to invest in, yeah, 100% go for it. Okay. Yeah. All right. That sounds like thumbs up, thumbs down in the middle. Thumbs up, yeah, for sure. Good. All right. Thank Good. you. Thanks, man. Three important things about this goggle review. Number one, like ignore what it looks like. The bench I know is absolutely crazy. It's not about what the information looks like. It's about how good that information is. So hopefully this is helping you make up your mind to make that decision. Number two, as far as these goggles go, my personal opinion on these goggles, and I cannot believe that I am saying this. I love value, right? I think that this $500 pair of goggles, the flagship, most expensive DJ goggles out there, what they offer 
is actually a pretty awesome unit for the price. So the price to performance, I am more than happy with. I think it suits very nicely, especially when you think they've got the N3s in there for some cheaper options as well. And it looks absolutely gorgeous, like flying this thing around. And then number three, if you are still on the fence and deciding, is this the right pair of goggles for me? Uh, we have some members only videos down there. So some exclusive videos where Stickman Steve and myself, if you click that link, you'll be able to find it. But Stickman Steve and myself are going through. We are looking at these goggles in depth. It's the unedited version, a conversation where we go through and we have a checklist like price, image, latency, range, the air units it comes with, the batteries, the comfort, everything else, the interface options that you need. All that extra information there as a bit of a shout out, a bonus video we've put together as well for you guys who decide to be members. So if you're gonna drop the plunge and uh, spend $500 on a pair of goggles but you need a little bit more info, that membership is there as well. And as a bit of a bonus, it supports the channel. It helps share and make these videos possible for you. So without you, this wouldn't be possible because this is not a sponsored review. We were never included in any of DJI's plans of releases, but it's about getting you the best information possible so you can have the best time flying. Remember, it's not about the best gear, it's about the best time and your situation is gonna be different than anybody else. And this information is gonna help you make the right decision for you. So thanks for being here. Go watch this video. And if you want even more information on the DJI uh, Goggles 3, remember those member videos, they're down there as well. All right, happy flying. So, because that's a big part about when you're gonna buy a set of goggles. That's why I love Walksnow yep. in the past, because yep. they had those options. But 100%. now, these have some 04 options as well. So you what do. do you think about the air units that come, that combined up to the DJI? Yep. Goggles 3. Yeah, so you got the two options. You got the light and the, the Pro. Yep. Pro, I think, is a standout. Yeah, it's the camera uh, mounting system needs a bit of attention. It's mm -hmm. pretty trash. But the actual VTX air unit itself, fine. Like, that's awesome. That's what it should have been years ago, right? Yes. Um, with the 04 light, leaves a lot to be desired. Okay, cool. You can put it on a whoop. It's got that whoop, mile, whoop style pattern for mounting. It's lightweight, but the camera sucks. Mm -hmm. It's fragile. Yep. And then the versatility between the two, like, why can't you use one camera onto one VTX. Yes, you know what yeah, I mean? there's it's a the couple of nuances system. there. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yes. So I think that limits your options a lot, obviously, mm -hmm. but for the price, for them coming in being much more competitive 